The following is a production of the University of Minnesota, driven to discover. Well, greetings, everyone. I'm David Arendelle and host for this podcast. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Well, during my recent trip to Australia to attend a conference in October of 2019, it was one that was hosted by the National Center for Peer Assisted Study Sessions, or as they abbreviate it, PASS. I listened to presentations by professional staff members and by student peer study leaders from across the Australian higher education institution region. I learned how peer learning has been expanded much more holistically than it's typically practiced here in the United States. It's been more holistic in the objectives for the student leaders, not only attending to academic issues in transition, but also mental health, physical health, and other issues that are all critical for helping students to be able to complete their college educations. For me, I began to hear more about something that was called Students as Partners, or as they abbreviated in the literature, SAP, as a distinct theoretical framework for expanding peer learning to in multiple dimensions and treating students, both participants as well as the study group leaders as full partners in creation and delivery of the peer learning programs and as equal partners with the professional staff and the faculty members who teach the courses. I discovered SAP had originated in Australia, Canada, and the United Kingdom and has really only just recently expanded to a few places here in the United States. Well, obviously, my surprising discovery of SAP was due to not getting out more often, listening to more student voices, and also reading the professional literature. So I have a lot of things that I need to learn much more about. I really think it's the next generation for peer learning to see the leaders is not only just focused on those difficult courses, which has been a typical approach that's been taken by most of the U.S. programs, but something that's much deeper and richer. And this whole issue about treating students as equal partners in the creation of the course is something that very few places inside the United States has taken a look at. I also have created a web page on my website, arendale.org, devoted just to students as partners. Not material that I've created, but simply as a place where I'm sharing things that I've discovered, links to online training materials, and also a link to a journal that's devoted exclusively to SAP. I think you might end up really finding that really quite interesting. Also, as uh, for those of you who are listening to this as a podcast, I also include another resource that's attached to this podcast series, and that is an annotated bibliography of all the articles that I've been able to discover about peer learning in the Austral-Asian region. And that's a very particular geographic term because it's looking at what's going on in that entire region of the world, stretching from Hong Kong to China to Australia to New Zealand and other places in between. There's a national regional uh, training site inside of located inside of Australia that serves all of those different countries. So more about that will pop up in some of my future podcast episodes. And I hope also to have a a short interview with the director of that program as well. Well, Let me just share just a little bit of what I've discovered about students as partners, just to kind of whet your taste and to think about how it looks a little bit different than as most typical programs operate here in the U.S. Students as partners in teaching and learning in higher education. That's the long formal title that's often used. Generally, it's limited down to students as partners and then abbreviated as SAP. Well, it's a pedagogical approach that's been embraced recently by many higher education people inside of the UK, Canada, and Australia, and more people inside the U.S. SAP implies students and faculty academic staff working in collaborations 
as partners to improve teaching and learning experiences. Some people have described it as a relationship in which all involved students, academics, professional services, staff, senior managers, students, unions, student unions, and so on, are actively involved in and stand to gain from the process of learning and working together. Considerable attention has been given to the terms partner and partnership in this literature, especially considering the traditionally unequal relationships that have developed between faculty and students, particularly here in the United States, a relationship in which faculty assume the role of experts and take on the responsibility of sharing their expertise with students. Well, all of this material here I've drawn from a particular web page that's maintained, and if you did a search for it, you could find it. It is from the Center for Engaged Learning at Elon College, E-L-O-N College. The webpage provides a complete definition. What makes SAP such a high impact practice? Good practices for this particular approach. How to be able to embed and look at questions for research, practice, and theory. Key scholarship that's already been published in this area. Related blog postings. Model programs that you could learn more about as they're operating with it and other featured resources. So as I said, I'm devoting time inside of my webpage for the things that I'm learning, and I have a lot to learn. And also, um, as I said, there's also a bibliography that's going to be available for those who are listening to this as a podcast uh, that you can download. There's a real rich history of peer learning programs in Australia that date back many decades. I also have learned more that some of the best literature that's come out about online learning, online learning has been important for Australian higher education simply because of the remote locations for some towns and villages from the major cities where some of the colleges are located at. So not only has the Australians been real leaders in peer learning, also real leaders in online learning. So I encourage you to check out their literature. Well, thanks for listening today. Hope my words were useful to you in your work in helping students to achieve their dreams. Hope you join us for future podcast episodes. 